bathroom while lifting a spoon. He might have. I see. Thank you. Redirect. Dr. Tedrow, what was more dangerous for Mr. Briggs? Lifting a spoon or being dragged around two counties? Mr. Briggs should not have left the hospital. Look, I know what you're thinking. No. I should take her in to live with me. Other people put their families in places like this. We do not put our family in places like this. You are single-handedly keeping a charter school alive. You only go home to sleep. How are you supposed to take care of her? I could retire. No, you couldn't. Mira, it's uh, not so bad. Maybe she'll like it. It smells. They're cooking lunch, Abuelita. What are they cooking? Skunk? Mama, Ravi has gone to a lot of trouble to arrange this for you. Uh, I didn't ask you to. Why should I move? After 40 years? Because here nobody has to carry groceries up six flights of stairs, Abuelita. They have uh, activities, you know, movies. If you fall down again, pasa cualquier cosa, anything, you just push a button. If I fall down at home, I bang on the floor, Mrs. Rivera here. Sonny. Well, think about it. I'm just trying to help both of you. Bye. I have to go. I'm made it in court. Good. Go help somebody else. Yeah, it was around the time my father's health started to deteriorate. Charmaine stopped letting us visit him. She made excuses at first, like he was having a bad day, and then she stopped making excuses. It hurt us deeply. Uh, Your Honor, the charge is manslaughter, not being mean to stepdaughters. Move it along, Mr. Barba. Miss Briggs, tell us about the day your stepmother removed your father from the hospital. My sister went to court to get an order allowing us to visit him. Was the defendant aware of this? Yes, that's why she ripped him out of there. Anything to keep us from seeing him. Move to strike. Sustained. Okay. Did you ever find out why the defendant did not want you to see your father? I assume it was about his will. I don't know if she was trying to get him to change it or if she was afraid we would. Move to strike. She says she doesn't know. Or maybe she just hated us. Your Honor. Sustained. The jury will disregard. Mrs. Briggs. Oh, my God. Is there a problem? Could be, Your Honor. It's a video message from Walter Briggs. Now, if anyone is still reading Fred Worth's books by the time you see this, that could only be because it's part of their punishment at a state penitentiary. He spends the first ten minutes trashing his literary rivals. Well, God forbid a feud should end just because he died. Where did this come from? It's an internet service that sends messages to your loved ones post-mortem. They recorded it three years ago. His obituary triggered its release. For an extra fee, they set it to music. Now I want to talk to the people I love. My beautiful wife, Charmaine, who saved my life. And my daughters, whom I love despite the way they treated me. The way they treated him? He certainly had a different view on it than we do. Well, he had dementia. I mean, he was confused. He doesn't look confused here. But Their mothers turned them against Charmaine. They were rude to her. Rude to my wife in my own home. I talked to his daughters. They knew nothing about this. Can the other side use this in court? They'll find a way. But you wanted to have it both ways. For years, you wouldn't speak to me because of that incident with your mother. Now, that would be the occasion where he threw your mother through a closed window? Yes. Okay. But when your career in the theater went to nothing, and you wrote that dreadful adaptation of The Fifth Assailant without my permission, you began coming around, pestering me for the rights. It just became too tedious to see you. You testified yesterday that Mrs. Briggs barred you from seeing your father because of his will or she hated you. Is that still your contention? Yes, I still believe it. So you don't believe your father? I believe he was under her influence, her spell. I see. 
Charmaine was sentimental. She thought a father should see his children whenever, no matter what. But I had to insist it was best for us all. When Walter went into the hospital, I knew he didn't have long. I, don't think this is I wanted him to die thought. in peace, My skin without being is pestered, awful. and in a beautiful place. There was a lake in Quebec where we had happy times. And what about medical care? There couldn't have been much at the lake. He was dying. He knew it, and he had the courage to face it. He was the bravest man I've ever known. Did you tell him why you were taking him out of the hospital? I didn't have to. He'd made it very clear that he didn't want to die surrounded by tubes and machines. Now, we've heard testimony that before the heart attack, you gave your husband erectile dysfunction pills without his knowledge. He was very proud. He wanted to feel like a man, and he didn't need to know that a drug was helping him. I wanted to have his child to get another share of the estate. No, because I love my husband. I've never met anyone in my life like Walter Briggs. And I wanted to have a piece of him with me forever. And I wanted the world to have another piece of him. Thank you, Mrs. Briggs. I'm sorry for your loss. And I am very sorry that you have to be here today. Your husband's doctor testified that he might have recovered, but you knew he was dying. Which medical school did you attend? Objection. Mr. Barba. I knew he didn't want to be in that hospital. But you didn't remove him until after you'd learned that his daughters had won visitation rights. Seeing them distressed him. Right. And you knew he wanted to die in peace. Yes. So you peacefully yanked him out of his hospital bed with a headlock in his arm. He didn't want to be there. You lied about where you were taking him. Put him in an ambulance, pulled him out of that ambulance in Midtown Manhattan, shoved him in a taxi. He didn't need an ambulance. And then you took him to Westchester to wait in an airplane hangar without oxygen medication or professional supervision. He was happy. He wasn't suffering. He was with me. Not until the fatal heart attack that occurred shortly thereafter. Which could have happened at any time. And that gave you the right to make it happen sooner? Your Honor. Withdrawn. No further questions. The witness may step down. Ms. Heller, your next witness. Tears, but I'm not going the to defense the calls to Judith Briggs. So, um, that negates that. Your Honor. She wasn't on the list. She's been sitting here listening to other witnesses. She didn't hear anything she didn't already know, and she only just offered to testify. I will allow it. I'll give you an hour to prepare. Judith, I can't believe you're going to testify for that bitch. After I saw Dad's video, I finally understood what was going on. I stopped seeing him because you told me Charmaine wouldn't let us visit. But it was just you. No, she forced him to make that video. She hates us both. Lila, please, just one minute. Judith, what do you intend to say in the stand? That my sister lied to me. Charmaine hates us both. She didn't want either of us there. I was just the scapegoat. I've always been the scapegoat in this family. Delilah, stop. This is all about your play, isn't it? That play was supposed to be her big break. She told me it fell through because she couldn't get funding. I couldn't get funding because Dad wouldn't give me the rights. You're so arrogant. You know that. Couldn't be good unless he wrote it himself. Besides, I was a girl. How could a girl be a good writer? How could a girl compare herself to him? I called him on his stupid prejudices. That's what he couldn't take. Are we interrupting? Blessedly. We're in a conference. With my witness. Let's cut to the chase. The good little sister is going to take the stand and demolish your case by proving that my client was right to keep Delilah away. Scintillating family drama, but that does not give Mrs. Briggs license to recklessly cause her husband's death. If I could have kept him alive, I would have done anything. But we both knew it was only a matter of days. His mind was gone. He didn't know anything. No, he had moments of clarity, and when they came, he was adamant about what he wanted. He didn't want to be raped. Oh, Delilah, for once in your life, just stop. 
one thing I know. My father wouldn't want any of this. Well, we don't either. Counselor? Your client pleads to criminally negligent homicide, does one year. No, not good enough. I might consider reckless endangerment. First or second? First. It's still a felony. I could accept probation. You know what? We'll take it to court and get an acquittal. You know what? We can. We're doing court right now. Let's go. No. Let's end this. I'll take it. On one condition, that she is not allowed to ruin Walter's work with her bad play. He didn't want that, so I don't want it. Judith. Delilah, you know I love you, but I have to respect Dad's wishes. And the vote will be tied. I'll take you to court. No. It won't be tied. I may be cut out, but there's a third vote that I will control. Your new brother or sister. A fertility clinic implanted a surrogate with an embryo. My egg and Walter's sperm. It's all doing fine. Okay, then. We have a deal and you have a child. Mazel off. One year's probation, she killed her husband. Well, one might argue that she kept him alive. And I do believe that she loved him. So what? People can't love somebody and still hasten their demise? Chrissy, I know you admire the guy, but there was no way a jury was going to put Charmaine in jail. And the daughters are okay with this. One of them is. Judith, talk to yourself. It's a good idea. Oh, families. How's your grandmother? Still giving me grief about moving out of that walk-up death trap. She somehow confused with Shangri-La. She didn't like the facility? No, she didn't. But it can't be her choice anymore. So, we're starting to pack up her things under protest. Oh, that's hard. You are a good grandson. No, I'm not. I'm overcompensating. What are you going to be doing when you're 85? Squabbling with you? Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> I thought you might like to have this. The fifth of Salem. First edition. An autograph. I know you admired my father. I did. Thank you. So, now you left to clean up your father's... Affairs? <laughs> You can say it. He was a charmer. Charmaine asked me to go through his papers. His publisher is bringing out his collected works in a new edition. He deserves that. I wish you could have known him when he was all there. I do. go through her things, you know, just to help her go through her stuff. And uh, I buzzed the buzzer, and, and there was no answer. So, you know, the doctor got a key, so I came in, went up the stairs, got into the apartment, walked down the hallway, and she was lying on her bed. I love me, mommy. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I never should have agreed to this. She told us she didn't want to move. I should have moved in with her. I should have, I should have quit the job. Mommy. I know it was me, okay? She said she wanted to die in her own home. justice system, 
Sexually based offenses are considered especially heinous. In New York City, the dedicated detectives who investigate these vicious felonies are members of an elite squad known as the Special Victims Unit. These are their stories. Isn't this freaking adorable? It was on sale. So, the crib here and the changing table over there. What do you think? I can't believe my little sister's gonna have a baby. <laughs> That's what I think. You still haven't told mom yet? Mm, not exactly. Ooh. Tommy wants to wait till he and I are married. We're gonna go to Montauk in April. Hey, babe, how does this look? Sonny, what are you doing here? It's great to see you too, Tommy. He's gonna help us move all that crap out of there. You wanna put up some shelves? We got like seven months. <laughs> and I have to go see my parole officer, remember? Hey, how's that going? Great. Tommy's got promotion at work. The game is all moving team. Yeah, I'm head schlepper now. Now we'll make sure you tell your PO, all right? Raise promotion, that's brownie points right there. I want to get there early so I can leave early. We got a doctor's appointment this afternoon. Our first sonogram. Ow. Did Bella tell you I popped the question? She's going to make an honest man out of me. That's great, Tommy. That's great. Wow. Just a lot of changes. Shut up. He's really grown this time. I'm happy. Listen, I am happy. Hey, Gabe. Okay, it's going to be great. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <sighs> Sullivan, you're still here. Good for you. <laughs> How you doing today? You seem antsy. I'm good. I just, uh, I had a thing at four. I've been here since two. <sighs> thing at four? You want to tell me about that? No, let's just do this. You are antsy, huh? Yeah. What was this thing? No, nothing like that. I had a, I had a doctor's appointment. Well, you should have made it for a different day. It wasn't for me. My um, fiance Bella, she's pregnant. We were getting a sonogram. She's pregnant. That's good news, right? I'm gonna be a dad. You're engaged and she's pregnant. That's a lot of stress. No. No, actually, it's it's forcing me to grow up. I got a promotion at the moving company, a raise, my own. So food. a little thing like a urine test won't be a big problem today. Oh, right now, right here. Okay, so this is Back today's look for the Disney movie Frankenweenie. Um, be here tomorrow. We are doing true crime and makeup, and also, of course, we will be um, doing another Disney look. You can decline. I hope you all liked this one. I, we'll I'm going to look up some right new now. hairstyles and see if I can't figure out how to do something a little new with the mini braids and whatnot in my hair. Um, so be sure to stay tuned for those this week for the new hairstyles and the makeup looks and everything else. And I will see you all tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. As always, do what's right for you. Be cautiously kind to others and don't do anything I wouldn't do. Cannoli?